Well, one of the things I think that's really powerful about the legacy of Stephen Lawrence is that it's a case that illustrates the ways in which ordinary everyday people have the power to really transform society. And that's something that we really want to embed in the work that we do here at the Stephen Lawrence Research Center. For years, I wanted to have somewhere where I could have uh, all of Stephen's things just being housed somewhere for people to come and see. Just think something like this, it is so important to have a centre with all the information that's there. People can come whenever they want. We want to empower people to ask questions, to seek solutions and to advocate for change. Because Baroness Lawrence is our Chancellor here, the idea was put to her that the materials could be safeguarded here. At one point I think, you know, London, why is not in London, because that's where Stephen had lived and where he all lived and where he died. It is quite good to have it here in Leicester, so it's sort of spread across the country. I think that's important, so it's not just pure London centric. What happened to Stephen, what affected us, it's across the country. It makes so much sense to have this collection here that talks about integration and racial equality. DMU has a student body that is nearly half black and minority ethnic. So it does feel fitting that it's here, that it's at a university which has won awards for its social inclusion and our work around social justice and diversity and equality. So the Stephen Lawrence Research Centre at Dwarf University was a really exciting and challenging project for students. I was involved right from the start, so I worked with library staff and what we did is we engaged eight students on the activity of designing the space, which was predominantly an exhibition charting the story of Stephen's life. We knew that it was a difficult subject and our students would really have to understand what it was like at that time and um, spent a lot of time working with the archive team uh, before even starting to sign the exhibition. We have three different key elements of the centre. First and foremost is having the capacity to curate um, the archive uh, for the case and to be able to allow that research to be accessible publicly but also as a research tool and as an educational tool for a new generation. It feels like such a responsibility for us to take care of something so precious to the Lawrence family. The part that everyone feels the emotional connection to are the things that are Stephen's. We've got his school books, you know, with his handwriting in and his little pictures. His Cub Scout uniform with all the badges very proudly put down the arm. And that's extremely special. And what it allows us to do is when we share them with people, it brings Stephen back to life. And that is a very, very powerful thing and why archives are so special, because they are personal. The second piece that we have is the exhibition space that also contains a seminar space. It's already been used um, by student groups as a reading space and as a space for real conversation about some of the key themes that come out of the Stephen Lawrence case. The third angle is our academic research agendas, and there are four target areas that we're going to be focusing on. The first is focusing on the histories and cultures of black, Asian, and minority ethnic communities in the UK. Secondly, we're going to be looking at the concept and practice of institutional racism. Thirdly, we're going to be looking at uh, the denials of justice. And then the last area that we're going to be looking at is the social psychology of racial violence. There are many ways in which our research agendas open up a broad platform that we can explore. The establishment of the Research Centre, for me, was just so important to see how it can be used. It's something that I can see is something that's going to go on for generations to come. I'm very proud of what the University have done in order to put this together.